So today we're going to be doing the lab on the identification of gram-positive microorganisms. And we're going to be working with two new types of medium, one selective and one differential, uh, MSA agar and blood agar. So MSA, or mannitol salt agar, contains two key components. One is salt or sodium chloride. Do you remember from our classroom conversations, not every microorganism can grow in the presence of high concentrations of salt. For instance, staphylococci normally found in the human nose, on the human skin, or in the human throat can grow in the relatively high concentration of salt, while streptococci found in the human mouth cannot. E. coli, uh, one of the members of Bacteriaceae, um, family of microorganisms, also cannot grow in the high concentration of salt. So that makes MSA a selective medium. M in the name stands for mannitol, which is a sugar, and this sugar can be fermented by a certain species of staphylococci that I mentioned before. For instance, Staphylococcus aureus can ferment mannitol, while Staphylococcus epidermidis can't. Therefore, this feature of Staphylococcus aureus versus Staphylococcus epidermidis allows us to distinguish between normal member of human skin microbiome versus a potentially virulent, potentially pathogenic microorganism that can cause as you know, skin diseases or sinusitis. This is the mannitol salt agar. So when Staphylococcus aureus, mannitol fermenting microorganism, ferments the sugar, fermentation produces acid. Acid changes the pH of the medium from basically neutral to acidic. Acidic pH changes the color of the pH indicator from pink to yellow. So if the medium color changes to yellow, you've got yourself Staphylococcus aureus. Now the medium that we're going to be working with is blood agar. It's the standard TSA, TRIPTK soy agar, which contains sheep blood. Basically, the whole blood, the whole red blood cells, okay? And it turns out that some microorganisms can break down those red blood cells. Microorganisms that can completely destroy them, and you will be able to see it uh, when we get the results from this, um, from this lab. Microorganisms that completely break down red blood cells leave the clear agar surface, okay? So these microorganisms are called better hemolytic. Some microorganisms that kind of break down red blood cells, but not completely, they still lead to the release, that breakdown still leads to the release of iron. And these microorganisms are, these colonies will be surrounded by the greenish, brownish halo. These are called alpha hemolytic. And quite surprisingly, microorganisms that do nothing to the red blood cells called gamma hemolytic microorganisms. So it is pretty, you know, conceivable that better hemolytic microorganisms, the ones that break down red blood cells, will also be the most virulent, more likely to uh, lead to the disease. So um, we will attempt to distinguish the microorganisms based on that feature, the ability to break down red blood cells. Now we're moving on to the inoculation. 